We go green for 10 laps of action in the feature race. Brilliant getaway by the two set esports cars, but it looks like Heikkinen manages to oh. squeeze his way into the advantage and one car into the wall there. That was John Robertson. He gets forced to the inside and basically T-bones that wall. That's going to be his day done. That motor is popped, but Set Esports 1-2. Settling into third is going to be Bobby Zlinski for Koanda. Otto Taskin in fourth, then Mitchell will round out your top five. Car wide in the carousel to Set Esports car. Tall. Very wide. Yep, that's Holman. Very wide. Holman rejoins down the rear end of the field here. And it looked like Hearth actually clipped a bollard there as we see cones flying here as they rejoin the right way around Sonoma. Now, you can't take to the Joker on the first lap, but you can take it here uh, on the first lap. What I mean is you can't take it before you cross that start-finish line. There is Heikkinen opting for the Joker. Sammy Matty Trogan does it, Randy, and somehow finds some clear track. He got away with that. One car that did Joker, though, cycles out in front of Mitchell de Jong. That was Johan Hart, who's uh, cycled in front of Mitchell. Mitchell has his hands full with the Ford Fiesta of Garrett Lowe and Kevin Carlisle. And we know this Fiesta can be quick in feature race conditions here, Johnny. And he's all over the back of the winningest driver in this series, not only over the history of it, but this year. And I think he tagged the back of Mitchell, who is all sorts of sideways. And I think that's Johan cycling in front of him. Yeah, no, Kevin Carlisle. Oh, wow, Carlisle and said the other ART car, but De Jong opts for the Joker now, and he wants to get out of that battle. He's had enough, our 2018 champion, and the VRS Coanda Simsport driver now rejoins behind what looks like Otto Taskinen in the positive sim racing car. Taskinen with a mistake, and that allows De Jong through. Yep, a little bit of contact behind Johan. That was Johan that time. Saw the open door. He went through it. Tommy Hallman, he got through Taskin as well. So that's a costly mistake from Taskin. And then at the head of the field, it's still Yoni Heikinen who's taken to the shortcut. Sammy Matty Trogan, I think, still owes us a joker here. So this gap, and actually, no, no, he's not sorry about that. Paul's just confusing me as Bobby Zelensky <laughs> will take to the joker and come here in second. But Sammy Matty Trogan doing very well here, Johnny, reeling in his teammate of Heikinen and he still has that joker in his back pocket. About three seconds at the moment, and that's right about what we see for the shortcut here. And Zelensky has many podiums in his feature race history in this championship as we ride on board with the set esports car. But let's see if Zelensky can do the same here today at Sonoma. Let's listen to Sammy Matty Trogan through the final corners. Ops for the Joker, Randy, this time round. Oh, and another he needed... championship contender. Johan Hart to the round at what is the uh, second to final corner. We got another car off in the gra uh, grass as well. Kevin Carlisle. Oh, uh, the two ART cars. Carlisle's car looks done. I think there's a lot of suspension damage. There's Hart behind De Jong. Oh, and that just looks like Holman barging his way past. Tommy Holman just shoved Hart out of the way. And Johan Hart. Well, his championship isn't going to end here, but it's going to take a turn for the worst. He needs every good result to go his way. And it looks like it's not going to happen here today from Sonoma. Neither the same for Kevin Carlisle, the rookie. And something has happened. Sammy Matty Trogan, he's taking the Joker, and this fight for the race lead is now nose to tail between Heikinen and Trogan. You see the graphic up on your screen. Three tenths of a second, the gap between the two of them at the moment. Zelensky about a second and some change further back. So Sammy took to that Joker lap, getting clear of the traffic of Bobby Zelensky and cycles in just behind. But Johnny, you mentioned it. Three set esports cars in this feature event. There were also three ART cars, and all three of them have had big contact, and they currently run. 8th, 9th, and 10th is John Robertson, who's out of the race. Well, they're not going to be happy with that when you speak to the ART boys. They, they really put in a lot of work into this series, and, and they do really feel they've been hard done by it. So let's see what happens after this round, whether the stewards deem anybody uh, was at fault for those incidents, any penalties to come, because John Robertson did have to sit out qualifying, I remember, at Iowa. So I'm sure he'll be arguing his case for sure in the next week. But nevertheless, we focus on this battle for the lead, for the win here. Now, Heikkinen, like we said, Randy, has not won a feature race in over 12 months. And the last time he won one oh, another was at around. Sonoma. Mitchell de Jong spun around Otto Taskinen. Otto Taskinen off the nose of Mitchell coming up the hill to exit the gravel section. And so contact between those two behind. Here's the replay on screen. Like I said, Heikkinen hasn't won a race since Sonoma last year for round eight. This is Taskinen and De Jong. 
Oh, it just looked like a clumsy incident at the end of the day. Yep, certainly was. But you're right, Heikinen has been a while since he's found victory lane, but he's in a very good spot at the moment. He's, we know how good Sammy Matty Trogan has been this year. And I'll be honest, Sammy looks like the quicker car right now, Johnny, but, jo but Yoni is not making many mistakes. He hasn't opened the door for Trogan at all this far this event. They'll come across the seat two to go this next time by, up and over the jump and in towards the carousel. And Sammy takes a look up the inside to enter the carousel, but surely he won't send it, not nearly close enough. And indeed he doesn't but up the hill they're gonna go and I think Heikinen's looking really strong here with a lap and a half to go. You won't see team orders as we ride on board with Trogan because Heikinen still needs a win to his name for 2019. He still is in contention for the championship but his teammate here who leads the championship that we ride on board with needs every point he can squeeze out of this round but he's going to extend his championship lead nevertheless surprisingly Randy uh, although finishing in second because all the rest of his contenders of Fox and De Jong haven't fared so well. Yeah, he is definitely going to stretch that lead out. Mitchell De Jong will definitely be doing the best uh, damage control here where he currently sits in that fourth spot. We'll see if anyone jokers behind him. No. So he'll hold on to that spot for now. But your race leader's up the carousel. Yoni Heikinen's open a couple car links over his teammate this time. So it's going to be a, have to be a big mistake from Yoni if Trogan has any hope in the world, and I don't think it's going to happen. Only a couple more corners for the Finn. Like I said, it's been over 12 months since we've announced Yoni Heikinen was a winner here for a feature race in the iRacing Rallycross World Championship. But for round seven, Yoni Heikinen wins from Sonoma and he'll take home a good strong haul of points here for his championship challenge. This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. what we all wanted more rally cross action and tough championship tussles towards the end of the campaign a champion could be crowned today but if things go horribly wrong for them we could see seven drivers in contention potentially it'll be very unrealistic but they could be in contention for that title at the final round in seven days time from atlanta but for now we welcome you to the daytona international speedway located in florida in the united states of america it hosts the eighth and penultimate round of the 2019 thrustmaster i racing rallycross world championship with all coverage on racebot tv streaming live on your i racing esports networks associated platform whether that's facebook twitch anywhere else of course youtube welcome whether or long you're joining us on all of those associated platforms it's a 1.3 kilometer circuit is daytona long different to daytona short that we used earlier on for round 2.8 miles depending on your units of choice it includes eight variable corners with a lap that offers a challenge uh, that begins with a dirt section and a jump in the opening sector a very sluggish hairpin and then a fast sweeping end to the lap Look out for that Joker Delta time, which is around two seconds today. It's located just before the final corner. So is the start line for today's event. Good afternoon, everybody. Jonathan Simon on hand in the commentary booth. Randolph Cheneth alongside me. Paul Smith behind the scenes in production. We also have special guest Chris Leone behind the scenes. And Randy, welcome to Daytona again. And this is a very different layout, of course, to Daytona Short. We do share the similar first sector and a similar last sector but it's that middle sector that's all the difference 
There is some other differences, though, too, of course, as well, Johnny. Of course, the end of that first sector, you have a little bit of an extension of the gravel section, whereas on the short layout, it's sort of in the middle of that hairpin, and the right-hander, it sort of transitions from gravel into asphalt. And this, it stays gravel well past that right-hander, and down the little bit of a short shoot you get, then it transitions to asphalt, and then right back to gravel for that, uh, that hairpin that's basically at the top of the circuit, which is up near the oval. Uh, and then you come down through the fast sort of S's section, and it basically rejoins the short layout. But uh, very, very different circuit compared to the short one. Um, should race a little bit better, and it's going to be interesting to see how drivers get on with it. Yeah, most certainly. But for now, we will speak to Chris Leone, our special guest for today's event. And Chris, this isn't the first time you've had to replace a top driver for an interview. No, Johnny, you're sure right. And, uh, you know, before anything else, i got to say thank you. Uh, you know, thanks to you, Randy, Paul, Drew, Hugo, everybody behind the scenes for doing phenomenal broadcasts. But yes, it's true. We had a uh, world-class driver lined up for this week, but uh, unfortunately he had some family commitments, couldn't be available. About six years ago in Las Vegas at a GRC event, um, mm. I got called in at a karting, you know, just kind of demo to replace Travis Pastrana. That was not in my wheelhouse, so I'm hoping to do a little bit better today. Yeah, definitely, of course. And it's been a season where, I mean, if we look at the championship standings, Chris, Sammy Matty Trogan can wrap up the campaign at this round of Daytona. But if Mitchell De Jong can reduce that gap to at least 84 points, this event will carry on and this championship will carry on to Atlanta in seven days' time for the final round. Now, the key right now for everybody behind Sammy Matty Trogan is they need him to miss the feature race. They sure do, but Sammy Matty has been one of the most consistent drivers I've ever seen over the course of a season, whether we're talking real world or virtual. I mean, he just, he's been unflappable. He hasn't made mistakes. You know, everybody else has kind of had that one event where they're wondering, you know, what could have been if things hadn't gone wrong. Obviously, Mitchell had some other commitments and missed a couple of races this year, but you know, it, it's just, it's been such an incredible battle. And on the one hand, you would feel so bad for Sammy Matty if now was the week that he missed a feature for the first time, you know. But on the other hand, yeah, you always want to see just the closest championship battle that we, you know, that we possibly can. And I'm really hoping it carries to Atlanta next week. Yeah, same, of course. It'll always be good to be, uh, to be sort of decided at the final round like we had in 2018 but what we didn't have in 2018 that we have in 2019 chris is the fact that we've partnered all these virtual teams with a real world compatriot art with subaru winter experience and patrick sandell who we spoke to prior to the iowa round we had steve arpin of course and lobro motorsports plenty of other teams involved too and you're somebody who have has links of course, of the Rallycross world, working there throughout most of your career. So it's been really awesome that we got these links uh, to, to sort of reduce that gap between the real and virtual environment. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I got to start out by saying, you know, the SET Esports team, SET Promotion, UC Pinamaki was on last week. You know, they had already set up an esports program and they were coming here no matter what. But, you know, we've had a number of other uh, folks, Steve Arpin with Low and Bro Motorsports, Patrick Sandow with Super Winner Experience partnering with Apex. Uh, you know, Cabot Bigham came on board. Dirtfish came on board through Jim Beaver Esports. It's been really awesome to see, you know, just how many real world teams have taken an interest in Iris. And obviously, you know, our e NASCAR side of things has really seen a ton of that involvement, whether you're talking Dale Jr., Roush Fenway, you know, but we've been able to see that a bit in the rallycross world as well. And I'm definitely talking to a lot of people in the off-road world who are keenly interested in, you know, IRX as it stands right now, where it's going for 2020 and beyond. And, you know, people are really excited to get into the esports world. This is kind of a new thing for off-road. You don't really have a lot of world championships like this that involve, you know, dirt and flying through the air. So, you know, it's been really cool, and a lot of people have, you know, been really excited to watch the races. And you're someone, of course, like we said, with a lot of experience, getting the initial GRC done for iRacing, the GRC deal done for iRacing, I should say, but you're also someone who has these links that I think, to be honest with you, it's what's important in the world of motorsport is, yeah, you need to be talented. Yeah, you need to know a lot of things, but it's also about what you know. Not oh, Sorry, it's also about who you know, not what you know sometimes. Definitely. It's always good to have friends. And, you know, that's kind of been my MO in terms of my career. 
you know, fun fact, way before I joined GRC, I was actually an in-racing news writer in about 2011 covering Pontiac Solstice and Spec Miata, or no, it was, I think it was Spec Racer Ford, um, yeah. you know, here, here on iRacing, just covering some of the lower level stuff and sort of working my way up in both the real world and now the virtual world. So it's kind of been a long time coming, but once I came on board officially in the office, it was like going home again. And we've got about one minute till qualifying begins. So last thing I'll ask you is, you have a special top secret announcement for us. Now, I'm the only one who didn't listen to this out of the whole entire production team we have here at the moment. So let us know what it is. I'm excited to hear it. Yeah, Saturday, December 14th, we are going to be doing a special event. I've invited all of this year's iRacing World Champions. I've invited the drivers who have done two or more World Championships this year. And this is going to be the International Race of Champions kind of thing on steroids. Basically, we're taking all these guys, we're going to put them in one oval race, one road race, one dirt oval race, one dirt road race, and uh, all different vehicles from what they compete in the World Championships. And uh, we're just going to see who the best of the best is. I've had dozens of drivers reach out to me, multiple World Champions saying, oh yeah, I am in on this. Lots of guys just really, really excited about it. We'll be unveiling more details soon, but I am so stoked to be able to reveal that and uh, s just say stay tuned. Yeah, and we'll leave you to it, Chris, but people can catch you on the iRacing podcast too. The Downshift podcast, sorry, excuse me. Yes, sir. iRacing Downshift. Uh, we're trying to get back to more and more uh, more and more and shows now that we've moved into the new, uh, new office, so uh, stay tuned for that as well. Most certainly. We'll leave you to it, Chris. But Chris does so much work behind the scenes, ladies and gentlemen. So credit to him for making this series what it's been in 2019. But you can see at the bottom of the screen is the Heat 1 grid, Randy. And Josh Fox just claimed his first career pole position in Rallycross. Yeah, well done by Josh to get himself pole position there. Mitchell DeYoung going to be starting in the middle of that front row as well. John Robertson, Auto Task, and a lot of big names of this. I think the big news there from Chris coming after that interview, though, Johnny, new office model confirmed. Yeah, well, exactly. So um, here we're about to begin the first heat of the day. Now, if you're new to Rallycross, we're going to have three heats. Each of them will be five laps in nature. One joker available to the drivers. Now, only two will advance to that main feature race which pays the most points. You can see uh, when you look at the points system, P1 to P10 in the feature gets between 70 to 43 points. In qualifying in the heats, it's only six to one and then eight to one for your top six and top eight spots respectively. I hope I explained that clearly and with enough time for you to comprehend. But nevertheless though, we will focus on this first race start, which will begin in a moment's time for the penultimate round of the 2019 season. Yep, still waiting on these guys to get on the grid, but this is going to be one of the more stacked heats I think that we have all day long, Johnny. There's a lot of big names in this one, and a couple Coanda cars starting on the front row. Mentioned Mitchell, Bobby to his left. Well, like Randy Cheneth alongside me, he coined famously, the last corner is the first corner at Daytona as they'll round that right-hander and begin the penultimate round of the 2019 campaign. We go green from Daytona and a brilliant getaway by Mitchell DeYoung already. Josh Fox, Randy, is just hasn't been able to get off the line this season at all. No, but that's one of the cleanest starts we've seen from any of the races all year. Into the S's for the first time, and Josh Fox cycles into second. Bobby Zelensky settles into third. We'll see if all the cars get up and over the jump cleanly. Looks like it. I think that might be the cleanest start to a heat we've had all year. As I say that, one car's off wide, entering this sort of second sector, but everyone still rolls. Yeah, brilliant getaway so far. We ride on board with the Williams Esports driver. Now, his Iowa round basically ruined his championship but there's one of the most underrated drivers in rallycross behind him of bobby zelensky and he's gonna head straight to the joker along with his teammate yep so both the coanda cars of mitchell de young and bobby zelensky hit the shortcut for the first time and everyone else not really doing so actually bobby zelensky not having a great shortcut there because josh fox didn't take it and josh is right up his tailpipe so not a great situation here for the uh, Coanda Simsport driver of uh, Bobby Zelensky. That's not the sort of gap you'd want after taking to the Joker. Yeah, he's going to be careful here at this, Bobby. But have a look behind as well. That's Otto Taskinen, round four winner from Lucas Oil Raceway. As we ride on board with a positive sim racing driver, will he elect to opt 
for the joke. And then he doesn't. Now, Fox should edge ahead here of Bobby Zelensky, but it's up to Taskinen. If he can pull away here, Randy, with some good laps, he could jump the both of them. Yeah, he very well could. I had a look at Bobby's lap time, and we normally say the shortcut's about two to three seconds here at Daytona, and Bobby's lap with a 53.9, including the shortcut. Josh Fox behind him managed like a 54.1, so Bobby made a mistake somewhere over that lap that definitely didn't help him as he puts the pressure on Josh Fox now as he come out of that gravel hairpin up near the oval and back down through this fast S's section. Bobby really putting pressure on the 12 car. Josh Fox able to take that spot away, but definitely doesn't have a gap. Auto task it in. Oh, I mean, no. He's going to be, yeah, a little preemptive here, but he will cycle cleanly into second. Yeah, we discussed that. Auto task it in right there with these two squabbling have gifted him a gift, ironically. <laughs> Very poorly phrased. But he will head straight through to the feature if he can maintain this position. Now, Zelensky, how ironic is that, Randy? I just spoke about him being one of the most underrated drivers in Rallycross, and he's also one of the most consistent. And this heat, he just hasn't shown that. Yeah, he's had a couple mistakes. The opening lap wasn't great, and then fighting with Fox there. He's kind of forced to really, you know, try to pressure Josh Fox uh, when he had the opportunity. Now, here comes John Robertson. He's going to take the shortcut. He won't jump up to P2, but he might just have third as they cut into this gravel. That's the second. He'll have it up and over the jump now for the final time in this heat, but Robertson's off wide. Oh, I'm not sure if there was contact there, but the rookie of John Robertson, the highest ranked rookie coming into this season, has had an abysmal uh, routine over the jump there, but it's all on Mitchell De Jong now, who's uh, more contact behind, isn't there? Yeah, Bobby got into the back of, uh, I think it was Josh there, not great. Yeah, so unfortunately for Bobby Zelensky, he'll head straight through to the feature. Those two are still squabbling. Josh Fox has thrown it up the inside of the final corner behind the scenes, and Mitchell De Jong wins, Taskinen goes through, it looked like, as I see Logan Clampett promote himself up in a third, that's important grid position for the feature. A lot happened there, Randy, at the final corner of the final lap. And look where Josh Fox ends up. He tried to pull up the move on Zelensky, ended up losing a spot instead to John Robertson. Yeah, he did, all the way down to six. It was not a great race for the bulk of your front row starters, Josh, uh, Josh Fox. P1 to P6, Zelensky ends up behind a P3, but what a move there by Logan, just being clean, taking uh, timing that uh, joker well. Started that race and last, he ends up third. So well done by Logan. That should help him with the grid slotting for the LCQ later on. As we have Johan and your championship leader, Sammy Matty Trogan, on the front row here. Two championship challenges for sure. The lights illuminate for the second heat of the day. And we go green from Daytona yet again. Brilliant getaway by Sammy Matty Trogan, but Hearth is a tough Frenchman for sure. And the two are going to be alongside each other heading over the start finish line for the first time. Sammy Matty Trogan will concede and head into second. Now, Holman has dropped a position there to Kevin Carlisle, it looks like, in the other ART Super Winter Experience car. So you've got two by two here, Randy, sandwiched between each other. And these two teams are going to fight for two important feature slots. This is going to be interesting to see how they joker up to the gravel hairpin and ART gets a little bit of a bump to set esports. That was Hallman, or excuse me, Carlisle, I believe, getting in the back of Sammy Matty Trogan. And now it's going to go ART, ART, set, set. So down into the joker, how are they going to manage this? It's just going to be the first car to take to the shortcut. That's going to be Johan Hart. And all of set esports trying to get up in a second. There's contact right there with Sammy Matty Trogan. Just dumps that ART car coming off the final corner. And Kevin Carlisle, he is done. Wow, he couldn't care less, could Sammy Matty Trogan after that bump and run. Here's the replay. Now, it looked like Carlisle faked the joker there, Randy. That's what I deemed from that. And he's trying to hold up Sammy Matty Trogan here, and Sammy Matty's just had enough of it. He just couldn't be bothered dealing with it, and he's just disposed of the ART driver. I really don't like seeing that from your championship leader, because we do know that there's potential post-race uh, incidents and post-race uh, penalties coming down from race control and what a way to sort of po potentially jeopardize your situation should you not close out the championship today going into the final round at the Atlanta circuit. So it'll be interesting to see how that happens. Could provide some drama a little bit later on uh, going into next week. But regardless, Sammy Matty Trogan will cycle into second, Tommy Hallman third, Phil Diaz into P4. Uh, but other than that, everyone's pretty, I think, spread out at the moment.
Well, Daniel Matrani will have to miss this round, the other positive sim racing car, because he has received a race ban. He's exceeded the amount of penalty points. So Sammy Manitrogan's not in danger of that, but we did see John Robertson receive a qualifying ban, didn't we, Randy, after the Phoenix round, heading into Iowa, because he ended up dumping someone in, I think, less fashion than that. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, we, we've seen how important qualifying can be. I mean, sometimes we've seen a couple races where the guys on the front row just get tagged from the back and uh, end up getting sent around. But qualifying incredibly important in this series. So not definitely not the way you want to end your championship, uh, especially going into the final round, and especially if you don't close it out here at Daytona. Phil Diaz, by the way, still owes us a shortcut. He's not yet taken to the Joker, and he's only about 2.5 off the back. A Sammy Matty Trogan, he's going to take to it now. He should be able to jump Tommy Hallman, but Sammy's going to be too far away. And actually, Phil did not take that joker well at all. Hallman able to just go breeze by on the outside. He was well within the window to pass uh, Tommy Hallman there, but something not going right on the joker lap there for Phil Diaz. Well, the heat's about to end, but Randy, Phil Diaz has been the unluckiest driver, I think, this season because he's missed out on a feature race, I think, by one position about three or four times in the entire campaign. Yeah, it's been unfortunate for Phil all year as Johan's going to scream through the S's and in towards that final hairpin for the final time. But you're right, Phil has been so close so many times this season and he's just missed out uh, when the opportunities come up as Johan will win heat too. Yeah, but Joker's on the final lap for Trogan and Holman. So Diaz, whilst he provided some entertainment, was not even close to taking a top two spot. But even for Holman, he'll head through to the uh, to the consolation races along with those finishing behind him. But importantly for Sammy Matty Trogan, the championship will, uh, well, we're going to eliminate a lot of challengers because he's going to claim those feature race points later on that he needs. And it looks like it's probably going to be between him and Mitchell De Jong either today or next week. Now, of course, Sammy Matty Trogan can win the championship today, but it's going to be ever so unlikely, depending on how these points are all spread out. But now we head to the Heat 3 grid. It includes your 2018 runner-up and recent feature race winner, Yanni Harkonnen, starting from pole. Now, I really want to see a good result from Cepulevski, Randy. He's someone who needs a bit of, needs a good result for some good motivation. Yeah, I think you're right. And I'd say half to coming in. I know Cepi was one of the most... Uh touted drivers and a lot of people looking at him to have a big year I think he's probably been the biggest letdown this year as these guys rev up well let's hope my voice can last through at least one more heat we'll see how we go but we're about to go green here for the third and final time for our heat format and a brilliant getaway by the Finn of Heikkinen there as Cepulevski's collected Adria Perez luckily though they all point it back straight and we haven't had too much carnage. One driver into the wall. That's Connor Parisi in the Jim Beaver eSports car. A couple of cars jockeying back and forth as they go up and over the jump. But for the most part, everyone is through clean to the first couple of corners. So it's going to be Yoni Heikkinen who leads this final heat race of the day in towards the hairpin at the top of the circuit. Then you have the Ford Fiesta of Garrett Lowe settling into second. Stillian Cepulevski finds third. And Adria Perez in the Volkswagen fourth. Then you get Matt Madigan in fifth. It's actually a bit of a Volkswagen train, Johnny. You get V-Dub, V-Dub, V-Dub from Adria Perez all the way to Nathan Lyon. That's going to get broken up with a shortcut. Yep, this is Matthew Madigan in the Nerdworks car heading through the final corner. He's right behind the Bulgarian of Cepulevski. There's Perez in the V-Dub over the jump up ahead too. So all these drivers are fighting for important feature race position. But for the moment, Heikkinen looks clear. It's that second spot of Garrett Lowe that everyone's fighting for. Yeah, and Garrett's made a made a habit of making the features here, especially in the middle part of the season. This low and bro Ford Fiesta has been very, very good. Let's see if he might take to the shortcut this second trip around the racetrack. No, he will not. Does anyone behind him that looks like they might be in uh, striking position? No, they will not. So huge number of cars still not taken to the Joker here in the early stages of this race, Johnny. Yeah, exactly. So you can identify that at the top of your screen. Anybody who has the green tick has taken to the Joker. Anybody who hasn't will have the red X to their name. And this is good for confidence, Randy. I think Heikkinen now has taken a step up in terms of confidence already after his feature race win as we ride on board here with Matthew Madigan in the Nerdworks car. And those V-dubs are going to look quick, aren't they, Randy, in the feature? Yeah, they are. We do know that the, uh, the Subarus tend to be very, very quick. 
on the new racetrack, but once the, tra the track gets worn in and sort of the really packed, so to speak, we know that those Volkswagens and the Fiestas come around. We're taking a look as well as Adrian Perez, who is cycling into this. Yeah, what's happened, actually? Yeah, I'm not sure what happened to Perez. It looks like a technical issue. So we have those in sim racing sometimes when somebody just loses connection. They'll just disappear. So definitely could be a network issue for Adria Perez that can take him out of the race. And that's the sim racing equivalent to a real-world engine popping, for example. Yeah, pretty much like an engine going or maybe even cutting a tire. It's sort of the end of your heat race regardless. He actually joined us. So he's good back. to see the 97 the back out there on the racetrack. Yeah, 10 out of 10 pick for you there. And Matt Madigan <laughs> is going to take to the shortcut. Uh, he'll settle into P4. Still have Garrett Lowe and Adria Perez second and third. Again, neither of them, by the looks of things, has taken to the shortcut just yet. So if all things uh, don't get too physical, this is how they should finish. But let's see how it goes up toward the final passing zone of the lap. Perez is going to send it. Doesn't get to the back of Garrett, though. And Garrett's going to have to get the power down through the last high-speed sector of the lap. Tell you what, Perez was very respectful there. Could have easily bump and run the American. But he's going to out for the Joker, and I think he's going to make it through to the feature along with Yoni Heikkinen, who will take the win for Heat 3. To a Heikkinen and low through, two feature race winners in this series. The rest of them behind will head th straight through to your LCQs. There are the results on screen, of course, to not a good event for Michael Guest who finished down the back end of the order. But now we look at that consolation race grid for the first time. It includes a lot of drivers. Now, Clampett showed some impressive pace, Randy. I feel like he's one of the most underrated in this consolation race grid. But also keep your eyes on Kevin Carlisle, who was dumped early in the heats, and rookie John Robertson, who we need to see have a, uh, hopefully a feature race win in these final two rounds, if he can get it done. Yeah, and you also have, of course, an Ina Phil Diaz, we mentioned, who's been so close so many times to making one of these feature races. And there we go, the starting one spot outside of a transfer spot. We know these LCQs can be pandemonium, though, Johnny. We've seen it all year. So let's see if we can keep everyone running through this first corner uh, and maybe not shuffle the whole grid up by the time we cross our finish. Well, Phil Diaz, Marcos Matamoros, Cedric Gesmeyer, or Michael Guest. None of those four have made a feature race all season. So it's up to Diaz and Matamoros, who starts last in this consolation race, to get that done as we go green for the first consolation race from Daytona. Goodness me, that's a rapid getaway from Phil Diaz. He must have heard me, Randy. Yeah, it looks like he spent some time at the drag strip, got some traction compound on that Subaru, but because that thing just stormed off start finish. Logan Clampett, he cycles into P2. So those are your two transfer spots at the moment. Adria Perez is now going to go to work as they work through at the end of the gravel section for the first time up towards the top of the circuit. Diaz leads, Clampett second, Perez third, and I believe it's John Robertson fourth. Matt Adams will round out your top five as they scream down towards the S's. What's going to be the Joker strategy here? Top two take for it. Perez up for the clear track. So that's interesting right now. Perez is the dark horse in this race. He's got a lot of clear track right now up ahead to clamp it. It looks like the gap's about one and a half seconds between the two, Randy. So if he can close that gap down to about one second, he should make his way clear into those top two spots. And we've been seeing the Joker Delta be about 1.5 today. Sometimes we'll see it closer to two, but about 1.5 seems to be the metric that we've been seeing all day today. Logan's fate, though, is somewhat in Phil Diaz's hands because he, Logan decided the Joker and let Phil sit out in front of him. Now if Phil oh. slows down Logan whatsoever, it puts Logan at risk. Perez takes to the shortcut, and I think Joker, uh, I think Logan's losing a transfer position. So it was a two-second joker for Perez. It looked like Diaz and Clampett didn't have a good joker at all. Perez, that's a brilliant joker strategy. I thought he took it too early. I was shocked. But we ride on board with the Spaniard here. And he looks like he'll claim a spot into the feature race so far, provisionally. But how close did Phil Diaz get there in the next racing car? 
Yeah, Phil, of course, holding on to this transfer spot at the moment. He wants to break the cycle that we've been talking about on missing out on these feature races by a spot or two almost every single week. Through this final corner, do we have any other shortcuts coming through this time? Answer is going to be no. So your top three is going to be as they run. Perez Diaz Clampett. Clampett has to pick up the aggression here too, Johnny, because of course he has to pass yeah. Phil by the end of this race. He's not yet had an opportunity to do so whatsoever, however, but Logan is not one to shy away from throwing the move if the opportunity presents itself. Up the hairpin. Oh, he cuts that corner very nicely compared to what Phil does, but Phil is able to drive it off on the exit so much better as Perez screams away from P2 and 3. And if you're wondering why these VWs are quicker as this event progresses, the more that dirt gets worn, the quicker we're going to see the V-dubs. So pay attention to Clampett here on the final lap of Daytona. Now, will it be his final lap for the penultimate round of 2019? Let's have a look here through the dirt section. Oh, he's too far behind, Randy. I think he's made a mockery of the jump, but he went for it, didn't he? Lunge and a half into the hairpin. Yeah, that he did. You're right, though, about the jump. He was all over the place on the landing. Didn't really, didn't hit it square, didn't land it square. And, well, that's going to be Phil Diaz. As long as there's no mistake here, and as long as I don't give him the commentator's curse, he'll be transferring to the feature along with Adria Perez. The first feature race of the season for Phil Diaz. Oh, it's been so long, mate. He's missed it. I don't even know if he remembers he's in the feature right now. It's been so long. Someone tell him. Oh, that's a brilliant result for the NX Racing driver. And we spoke about it today. It's taken him eight rounds in this campaign, but he's finally done it. Along with Adria Perez, who, as good as Adria Perez is, I still can't stop laughing, Randy, at the fact that he managed to roll that VW last week at Sonoma all on his own. Yeah, that was definitely humorous uh, <laughs> from what we saw then. And you're right about Phil Diaz. Hopefully he realizes. Hopefully muscle memory doesn't take over and he just doesn't close the sim and go get ball. lunch or something. Yeah. <laughs> He just already. Oh man, we'll see if he has manually disconnected. We'll be like, no, you got a spot in the feature. But uh, we head to that second grid now, and this is a more stacked consolation race. Now for Josh Fox, this is critical for him. Now we already know Josh Fox's championship challenge is essentially, I mean, almost over right now. He's 134 points behind coming into this round, so it's more about pride and the feature race for Josh Fox that he wants to win. Grab another one to his name, of course, along with that one from Lucas Oil last year. But we're gonna begin the second heat right now. And that middle row's had a good start every time. Bobby Zelensky will take the lead heading into the first corner. Chebolevsky around the outside will be beaten by Horman in a drag race to the start finish line. But wow, that's a clean start for Rallycross. Yeah, we had Bobby Sands Jr. end up getting nosed around at the back end of the pack, but everyone else besides that is off, on ro off and rolling. So Bobby Zelensky, you mentioned the middle line, storming into second spot. Set Esports' Tommy Hallman will settle into P2, and still in Chipolevsky into the back of Tommy Hallman here at the top of the race track. So Set Esports and Apex Racing Team, powered by Subaru Racing Experience. These guys, this is becoming a big rivalry in the iRacing World Championship scene at the moment between these two teams. Johnny is actually the Williams Esports car of Josh Fox. He'll storm up into third. Oh, wow. That Esports turns him. I mean, that, I'm not sure if that looked like a racing incident to me. It certainly looked like a bit of contact, but for him and Holman, now uh, Fox's day looks almost done. Here's the replay up on screen. So we ride on board with a fin here, Randy. And I'm not sure how to call this. Well, I think this onboard is going to show it. Let's see what happens. You're going to see the Williams Esports Subaru up the inside. Tommy Hallman turns into the corner. And I'm going to be honest, yeah. I, I, I think Josh kind of turns himself across to Tommy's nose there, Johnny, because Josh kind of sent it in with a bit of a dive bomb move, completely blew by the apex and then tried to cut back down and get to the inside. And Tommy's never going to let him do that. I think that's a mistake all by Josh there. Yeah, see, that's why that was tough to call. It looked like initially it was Tommy Holman's fault, but I mean, Holman just tried to go for the up and under. He can't back out of the throttle in a, in a full throttle section of the racetrack. So um, on Josh Fox, he tried it though. Can't fault the guy for his strong heart in Rallycross. He got to test an RX2 car this year. And... Um, had that brilliant experience because of his links to Rallycross. Now, 
Here we uh, are looking at, what is that? One of the set cars. That will be Holman behind Chepalevsky. Now, this is important. This is for a transfer spot because only our top two and our last two will sort out that feature race grid. Yeah, that's correct. And Bobby Zlinski right now is one of the only drivers to have taken to the shortcut. Stillian Chepalevsky and Tommy Hallman, who sit second and third. Neither of them have jokered, and Bobby's actually been able to break away. So the joker strategy for these two is going to purely come down to racing each other. Stillian is three seconds off the back of Bobby Zlinski as they scream through the S's. If I'm Tommy Hallman, well, I think I do the opposite of what Stillian does here. Stillian goes the normal way. I'm taking the shortcut. That's exactly what Tommy does. Now he's going to get a little bit of a clean real estate, and I'll have a battle lap to try to open that gap up so Stillian doesn't just immediately get the freebie on the final lap coming to the checkered. Oh, Chepalevsky's butchered the jump, and he's got a damage ART Subaru Winter Experience car. And I'll head through what's going to be the hairpin. Now, for Zelensky, this is critical that he heads to the feature. He's had a very consistent season as Bobby Zelensky. Like I said, one of the most underrated drivers in Rallycross over the years. And he will win the final consolation race of the day. But who's going to head through along with him? Will it be Holman or the Bulgarian of Chepalevsky? Drag race to the line. Oh, I can't call it. Who's it? Who is it? It's Tommy Holman. Holman. Holman by a tenth of a second at the end of the day. So we will correct Go ahead. results of correct results will be up on screen in a second but Holman makes it through anyway Randy we head through there they are on screen it is confirmed Tommy Holman through and we say goodbye to Chepalevsky not a good race for your ART cars when you look at this feature race grid yeah you're absolutely right about that there's only I see Johan on the grid and is that's that, it. that might be yeah that's it so only the one of them um so the uh, apex racing team uh, powered by Subaru not doing great here. Subaru winner experience cars. So, uh, but this is going to be an interesting uh, finale race here to go, uh, Johnny, for the penultimate round of the championship. You kind of have a, a mishmash of names, don't you? You have some of the best names that we've seen all year, seen some of the names that have been, uh, you know, maybe taken three or four uh, feature appearances all year. And we got Phil Diaz making his first feature appearance here at Daytona Long. Yeah, good on Phil Diaz, of course, at Daytona Long. Now for Sammy Muddy Trogan, he can't. Officially now, we know, Randy, he will not wrap up the championship today from Daytona. But I tell you what, though, it's going to be ever tough for Mitchell heading into Atlanta. He's going to have to count on Sammy Matty Trogan missing the feature 100%. Yeah, you're absolutely right uh, going into that final round. Mitchell can still make up points again coming into this race. Uh, um, Sammy was more than a full race points value ahead in the lead. So right now with Mitchell, if he can outscore Sammy Matty Trogan, he can sort of keep that within the window. But, you know, if he goes into this final race with an 80-some-odd point gap, he's basically going into next week praying that Sammy Matty Trogan misses the feature because if he doesn't, uh, Sammy would essentially win the championship at that point as he's guaranteed 40 as long as he finishes the opening lap of that feature race. But uh, but yeah, this is going to be a, a very, very important feature that is getting ready to grid up. So the grid will include De Jong on pole alongside Johan Haas and Heikkinen on the outside. Behind them it will be Otto Taskinen. Now all four of these drivers have won a feature race this season. Make that five because Sammy Matty Trogan will start from the fifth position. Now, Garrett Lowe is also a feature race winner, not in 2019. Will he get it done at Daytona today from the sixth position? Down the rest of the order as we cycle through the grid, it will include, you'll see it on screen, it will be Zelensky, Diaz in his first feature race for the season, Tommy Horman, and don't forget Adria Perez. Perez is seventh, excuse me, so I skipped him in the order. Now, Randy, why are those, why is the second position and the outside line on the front row getting the best starts here today. I have no idea. Maybe someone's got some cheater traction compound or something they played down there and everyone's been benefiting from it. But you're right. That second row has been really good. I've also seen the outside row get a couple good starts. Remember Phil Diaz and his LCQ stormed from that third row. Remember yeah. in the, one of the heats, we saw that third car do that as well. So be interesting to see. Mitchell might be the first starting from the inside to have to get a good start here today. So that was Heikkinen's spot around the outside. He's on the right-hand side of the screen. Hearth in the middle. You can see the cars ready to begin the final feature race of the day. And we go green from Daytona for the penultimate round of the season. 
And Hearth is swamped by Harkonnen and De Jong. Oh, and they're barging their way past into the final corner. There was a domino effect, a car on its roof. That's the positive sim racing car of Taskinen. I'm not sure what Taskin was thinking there. There wasn't really a lane open. We've had clean starts pretty much all day, and that trend uh, ends here in the feature as Mitchell De Jong will lead the opening lap here. Sammy Matty Trogan, though, what a start from him, Johnny. He's up three spots from fifth all the way up to second, and that is not what Mitchell De Jong would have wanted to see. He was hoping to see Sammy Matty Trogan stay buried in the mid-pack or maybe even cycle down further. But for Sammy Matty Trogan, if he's able to come home second, that's great damage control today in terms of the points even if Mitchell wins. Mitchell takes to the shortcut, by the way, and it's going to be Sammy Matty Trogan who takes the normal lap. I think he'll still hold on a second. So looks like Mitchell, the only, only one going to the Joker. And third in this train is Yoni Heikkinen. He just took to the Joker after his abysmal start as we ride on board with Garrett Lowe in that CBD MD Lone Bro Motorsports car, of course, in partnership with Steve Arpin in the real world. Garrett Lowe got to visit the race factory just a couple of weeks ago. Brilliant for one of the youngest rallycross feature race winners, don't forget, at Iowa in 2018. Now let's see if he opts for the Joker. No, he doesn't, but the car ahead of Johan Haas does. Yeah, and Johan's going to cycle in towards that third position. going to be trying to chase down Sammy Matty Trogan. Right now it's Quanda Sim Sports, Set Esports, uh, Apex Racing Team, Set Esports, and then Low and Bro Motorsports, who currently run in your top five. Bobby Zelinski is trying to chase down Garrett Lowe, get himself into that top five, get another Coanda car representing in that uh, that top group, top half of the grid as they work down through this fast Estes section. Now, this entire pack of cars is pretty tightly packed together still, Johnny. It's about four or five car lengths between each one, but we've not seen a big breakaway with only one or two cars kind of getting away from the rest of the group like we've seen at a lot of the other races this year. Yeah, most certainly. Good fact there. Now, in 2019, our last winners here were Mitchell De Jong. So Mitchell De Jong did win the inaugural race of the Rallycross World Championship in 2018 here. Then we revisited this layout at the end of 2018. He won Daytona long again. It looks like, Randy, he could win Daytona in 2019 again. No one's beaten him at the long version of Daytona. Thing is, though, Sammy Matty Trogan is in the window and he's not yet taken to a joker lap. Two seconds was the gap. Last lap, it's come down two tenths, 1.8. And we've seen that joker delta fluctuate from 1.5 to two seconds, depending on who's taking it and depending on mistakes. So Sammy Matty Trogan is chasing down Mitchell De Young. As I say that, he clips one of the tire bollards and maybe that might drop him down a little bit down the running order. I see a little bit of damage on the nose of that set esports car as well as Johan Hart in the background, apparently having some dramas. Yeah, Hart was collected there. It looked like by Yoni Harkin and heading into the hairpin. Now, Tommy Holman's been spun around. Tommy Holman's intense. So issues for the Finn in one of the three set cars in this heat. Look at the smoke coming from the rear end there of, uh, of Yoni Harkin and Subaru. Um, that was bizarre to see. Yeah, he's definitely committed. You can't say he's not. That mistake, by the way, cost Sammy Matty Trogan seven tenths of a second. He's back down to 2.5 seconds. As you're starting to see the breakaway here between your top two and this sort of second pack and running order of cars. Johan Hart and Yoni Heikinen stack up on each other at the hairpin at the top of the lap. Garrett Lowe as well. He leads a big train of cars of Garrett Lowe, Bobby Zelensky, and Otto Taskinen, who's upside down early in this race. He's settled just behind this group, but he's taken to the Joker already and I don't think any of the cars in front of him have. Yeah, you can identify that at the top of the screen, of course, if you're new to the series. Now, can I correct myself before, Randy? Mitchell De Jong has not only cleansed swept Daytona long, he's never lost a race at Daytona in terms of feature races. He's only ever won at Daytona as we see some squabbling down the back end of the order. So it looks like yet again, he'll remain undefeated from this racetrack. It's the way it's looking at the moment. If things keep going like this, it's all on Sammy Matty Trogan, though, and what he can put together. Mitchell's doing great work out at the head of the field, opening that gap up. 2.8 was the last trip around the racetrack. Can Sammy Matty Trogan bring it down this time? No, it opens up another tenth of a second in terms of Mitchell De Jong. I know that in the past, we'd occasionally see that joker being about three seconds, but we've not seen anyone close to that three second delta, especially with as cool the track temps are today. You can see how overcast it is sort of uh, uh, just a cool racetrack for these guys 
giving tons of grips. I see someone has collected a ballard in the background. I think it may have been Otto Saskinen. Gave that a big wallop, who's uh, managed to as well get around Garrett Lowe. So right now, Mitchell DeYoung definitely seems keen on keeping his win cycle here at Daytona alive. Two to go this time at the uh, starter's gantry, and hopefully Trogan for you know, keeping his hopes of winning this race alive. He brings the time down, but he doesn't. Strogan drops another tenth. That's out open to three seconds. Yeah, it looks like too little too late for the Finn. But he can wrap up this championship next round at Atlanta. He has a very comfortable lead on Mitchell De Jong. And De Jong's going to need a miracle. Basically meaning that Sammy Matty Trogan will need to miss the feature and not qualify too well, not do so well in the heats for De Jong to win that championship. But at the moment, De Jong's done everything he can after missing two rounds earlier on in the 2019 season to extend this championship to one more race. You never know in the world of motorsports as we watch Zelensky in a sandwich here with Taskinen behind. Now, Taskinen, Randy, didn't he begin this race on his roof as we begin the final lap? Yeah, he did. That's what's so crazy about the fact that he currently finds himself running in P6 here on the final lap through this tight sector. Hit the midway point, coming out to the top end of the circuit. Everyone is being relatively nice with one another. A little bit, bit of a mistake from Johan Hart ahead of Bobby Zelensky here. Got a little sideways, but Mitchell DeYoung, he's going to head into the final corner. He's going to win here at Daytona. Undefeated at Daytona is DeYoung, and he continues that undefeated streak into the penultimate round of the 2019 Thrustmaster iRacing Rallycross World Championship. He will extend that championship battle to the end of the season heading into Atlanta. Now, some final battles on that final lap include Bobby Zelensky with a joker here. And we'll watch the replay on screen, Randy. He'll snatch that final podium position away from the Frenchman of Johan Haas. Yeah, Quinn is going to be very happy with that to get themselves first and second. Sammy Matty Trogan, I think he's more going to be more than pleased with ending up here P2 as well, Johnny, because I think starting in the mid-pack, you know, there's always the chance that something could go drastically wrong. And for the Finn, finishing P2 is going to completely minimize the damage from Mitchell De Jong. Mitchell's only going to make up, I think, about 10 points on the day there, thereabouts. But uh, if we get ready to go down your results, Sammy Matty Trogan is going to be a very comfortable man heading into the final round at, at, uh, excuse me, at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Most certainly, and there are the results on screen as we can see. Two Kuanda cars in your podium positions. Sammy Matty Trogan sandwiched by them. Johan Haas, I mean, won't be disappointing at the end of the day for him. You know, he needed a good result like that. Needed a clean event, Johan Haas, for once. And he got that here today at Daytona, which is good to see. Haikkonen ended up rounding out the top five. Now, Taskinen, after he was on his roof on lap one, surprisingly still finished seven in the seventh position, 10 seconds off the lead. Garrett Lowe in one of the only Fords out there in Rallycross ended up in six. You can see that rear end of the order, Bill Diaz with his best result of the season in the eighth position in the feature race. They'll be followed by Perez and Holman who had issues at the hairpin, don't forget, midway through the race. Now, I'm very surprised my voice has lasted this long, Randy. So apologies, ladies and gentlemen, if you've had to deal with that. But we will bring in Mitchell De Jong, our winner, in about 15, 20 seconds time once he's ready. But Randy, this championship goes to Atlanta. Now, the, the main thing I love about Rallycross for this round is that we saw some good, clean racing, apart from maybe an intentional wreck or two. <laughs> Yeah, it was actually very clean, especially the starts. The only thing we, you know, that we saw really diverge from that was that uh, that final race where, where um, I think it was Auto trying to make it three or four wide going into turn one. Everyone else kind of kept from doing that all day, but uh, you know went for it and definitely didn't work out. There are a couple other spins over the course of the day, but nothing really as crazy what we saw in the feature. But you're right. Hopefully that's a trend, and hopefully we can keep that trend up going into uh, the Atlanta Motor Speedway. Uh, for the final round of the season because we saw some great racing today and I think for that reason because we got so many of the cars surviving uh, the start of the race and getting onto that open opening lap and it's time to speak to winner yet again this is becoming a repeat offense Mitchell De Jong with his fourth win of the season and with that Mitchell you extend the championship heading into Atlanta next week you're going to have to hope for some miracles in terms of Sammy Matty Trogan, uh, he'll have to miss a feature race uh, for that round for you to have any hope of winning the championship. But most of all, Mitchell, we found out that you are also undefeated at Daytona. 
Oh, is that right? Okay, awesome. Uh, and is the championship still open? Like, am I still under an event now, heading into the final round? Yep, it's still between you and Sammy Mendy Trogan. I'll tell you what, Mitchell, don't get your hopes up because it's it's almost impossible, but you're in there, mate. <laughs> so awesome. you never know. Awesome. <laughs> it's mathematically no. possible. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm stoked. Uh, qualifying didn't go well at all. Uh, my first lap, the jump kind of sent me for a ride. Uh, the second lap also sent me for a ride, and the third lap I just took it super easy. And um, you know, if if I had to qualify anywhere except for pole, uh, that would be the place to to be. Um, you know, starting on the pole in the heat races is uh, very tricky because the the number one starting spot has less grip. So. I knew that if I kind of nailed it, I might have a chance at uh, getting Josh. And, um, you know, everything just worked out perfectly. It's a bit like Phoenix, where qualifying didn't really go to plan, but, you know, it, everything else kind of did. Um, we just kind of tried not to make mistakes in the main. And, um, yeah, no complaints. Finally got another win. And um, awesome to see Bobby uh, climb all the way back to P3, too. So it's a really good uh, team, team result. Yeah, most certainly. And the other thing I want to discuss is, during the start of that feature race, even I got confused at one point when I saw a set car in the second position and I'm like, oh, okay, it's, it's Yoni Hike and then, you know, he started on the front row. And then we checked the timing screens and we're like, oh, it's Sammy Matty Trogan in, in second. Did you notice that in your relative screens and go, oh, no, this championship could be over? Well, um, so obviously I saw the, the big wreck um, next to me and behind me, uh, all around me, I guess you could say, uh, <laughs> on the start. Um, looking in my mirror uh, and I was like, okay, this is interesting. I can kind of just hopefully chill. But then I saw uh, going over the jump, suddenly I looked in my relative and I saw Sammy was there again. I was like, oh, all right, well, <laughs> we uh, we don't have any uh, breathing room anymore. So um, pretty much after I jokered that first lap, I saw he stayed out. And um, from that moment, I turned off all my timing. I had nothing on my screen, so I had no idea or anyone it was except um, my rear view mirror. And I could see that I'd slightly pull away every lap, it seemed like. And, uh, you know, just tried not to make mistakes. You know, you the Subaru is so hard to drive in um, these uh, worn-in conditions. If you just dip a, a rear wheel in the in the loose stuff, you can lose half a second like nothing. So, um, yeah, that was really it. Uh, you know, the championship thing is so far out of my hands. Um, I just kind of... Need to try to do the best I can, go for wins, and, um, you know, it, it worked out today. And finally, who gets it done for you in that VRS Quanta Sim Sport machine? Um, it's been a thrilling season for you, and we'll hopefully see you next round. Now, can I just say, before I let you do your thank yous, we just heard word that you do have 82 points to Sammy Matty Trogan. So, whilst I'm laughing, and I'm laughing out of joy for you, because you did miss two rounds, so this is so impressive by yourself, but... The funny thing about it is Sammy Muddy Drogan can wrap up the championship in qualifying. So do us a favor, Mitchell, next round at Atlanta and qualify on pole so that doesn't happen. <laughs> at least if he's going to get it done, at least happen during a race. So it, it looks better for him, if that makes sense. Yeah, I'll do my best. I'll do my best. Um, yeah, of course. Uh, thanks to all the guys that, um, you know, would, would test with us during the week, um, getting the, the track conditions where we need to be. Um, it's been a huge help. Uh since last year um it's kind of the same group that we've always had and um shout out to them uh, they know who they are and um yeah uh of course uh, to the rest of the team for the support Jorn for uh hanging out with us in in the spotter stand and um all our other partners um virtual racing school and we're in design simquip fitech um of course you guys race spot and uh, my personal sponsor red bull yeah, most certainly. So there is Mitchell DeYoung, our winner again. Now, that's his fourth win of the season, Randy. And he's got 82 points to a man who came home in second, and he stood alongside you. Yep, I've got the fin of Sammy Matty Trogan. Sammy, tell me about, first thing I want to talk about, the start of that feature. I know for you coming into this, you knew you kind of had to, you know, as long as you had a good day, you'd pretty much nearly wrap up the championship. And you kind of started in no man's land, I think, for that feature grid right in the middle in P5, but you managed to sort of avoid all the drama and you come out of the uh, the grid, uh, come out of the start off the fir first corner and you got yourself second. How big of a relief was it to sort of dodge all those bullets and flipping cars and come away P2 behind your, or uh, just behind your championship rival? Yeah, I saw that uh, the guys from to me crashed in the first corner and then I just uh, being calm and then... Uh, 
I was really pushing hard in the first two laps, and then I made one mistake, and then I didn't have so good, so good pace. But uh, <clears throat> overall, okay, o okay race. So going into the final round at Road Atlanta, excuse me, Atlanta Motor Speedway, I keep making that mistake. Uh, you currently have an 82-point lead over Mitchell DeYoung. That's the unofficial number we've done here in the broadcast booth, which basically means that you could potentially wrap that championship up in qualifying. All you need to do going into that round at Atlanta Motor Speedway, you just need to make up three points and the championship is yours. How confident that you think uh, you can do that in the, uh, in the qualifying session? Johnny wants to see you do it in the uh, at least in a yeah. race session after a heat or after the feature how uh, how uh, how um confident are you that you can maybe steal pole away there and wrap things up before you ever take to the starting grid for a race yeah i was good in atlanta uh last time so yeah i'm confident that i can make it in the qualifying so i i know that i'm faster so but let's see what happens and now we're running the different layout of Atlanta. Of course, we did the same things with Atlanta and Daytona. Uh, we ran the long uh, layout last time we were there, and we're running the short layout. Tell me some of the differences of that short layout. Going to be a little bit more uh, compact, of course, and a uh, much shorter lap. Tell me about how uh, how it differs and how it's more difficult from the long uh, long track. Yeah, it's a, a bit uh, slower track than the long one. Uh, that's the main thing. I, I need small technical uh, because the last corners are really slow. So, yeah, that's the difference. Well, thanks for joining us, Sammy, and congratulations to you on a successful day of racing, coming home in second, and thus far a successful season, nearly having that championship wrapped up as we head into the final round, and for all intents and purposes, I think, arguably, having the championship wrapped up heading into that final round. But before we let you go, who gets it done for your entire, uh, entire team over there at uh, Esports? Yeah, thanks to Joni and Tommy, uh, and uh, thanks to my sponsors. So there it was, Sammy Matty Trogan with a big second place finish here today. All but guarantees the championship heading into the final round at Atlanta. Next on the list, though, podium finisher today as well. Second Quanda uh, car to get on the podium. Bobby Zelensky stood by with Jonathan Simone. And Bobby... What a thrilling final lap it was for you. I was too busy celebrating Mitchell DeYoung's undefeated streak at Daytona, and then I'm getting our producer, Paul Smith, in my ear telling me, well, you missed Bobby Zelensky finishing third, and you just played that to perfection. So brilliant job. It was a good strategy from yourself. Yeah, thanks. Um, <laughs> I kind of learned from my mistakes from the heat, really, uh, where I took the Joker too early, and it just put me in a bad position overall and um, started eighth in the main, and I was like, well, I got nothing to lose. Um, and I'm just gonna just gonna wait to take it, and whatever happens happens. And everyone around me just started messing up, and uh, Johan made a big mistake the last lap, it allowed me to pretty much get that uh, gap reeled in and take the Joker on the last lap. And it's always faster to take it on the last lap because you don't have to worry about how bad of an entry to turn one you have. So um, feels really good, awesome to get a third straight podium. And when we did the preseason survey, and the drivers also filled that out for the Simon Racing Report. Everybody voted you as one of the most underrated drivers, and even I agree. I think in 2019, you, you're by far the number one underrated driver out there in the field. Now, why is that? Why do people think you are underrated? I have no idea. <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe I, I didn't have as good as a year as I should have had last year. Um, or I don't know, man. You'd have to ask them. Um, I don't <laughs> I'll know. put I, an explain I, next time. <laughs> I have no idea, dude. I, I don't know what people think about you know, why I'm underrated. I just go out there and race, and I don't know. I felt good coming into the year, obviously, being with Coanda and teammates with Mitchell. I knew it was going to be a good year. I wish it went a little better and missed those two features, and this really killed us in the points in terms of trying to chase Matt, uh, Sammy Matty, but Sammy's been faster than us all season anyway, so can't be too mad, I guess. And, and I, I should say, along with that, I mean, you missed the feature at Lucas Oil for round two, that was the round that you collided with Johan, wasn't it? Unfortunately, at the jump. No, I made. I ended up making that. Um, I missed uh, round two. Was a uh, Daytona short. Oh, Daytona, excuse me, not and round that two. Was, I mean round four. Yeah. Yeah, I ended up somehow making Lucas Oil. Um, but Daytona short. Yeah, that was like a day after the peak Homestead race, and I had like no practice, and I really didn't want to race because I was burnt out from the huge championship race in, in NASCAR, and mm. uh, I just screwed up in qualifying though. I'd say Daytona's are my worst tracks. I'd love to hit those tires and get zero X's and ruin my qualifying laps. I'll tell you what, um, 
I would have qualified second there, but I clipped one of the tire barriers. So it's all, it was all my fault there. Um, honestly, I, I, I would blame myself for, you know, yeah, you have, you can blame bad luck a little bit for getting in a wreck or two and then, you know, races I missed, but, uh, at the end of the day, I should qualify better. Um, so I was actually happy with how I qualified today, even though it was seventh because, uh, I suck here. And by the way, I was looking at 2018 results, mate. So that, that's why I was so completely wrong <laughs> off that. But um, when I look at your qualifying results, you qualified 11th at Sonoma, still made the podium last week. But it was those two rounds, like you said, where you missed the feature, qualified 15th and 11th. I, I mean, I'm not even going to look at your 2018 results. I don't even think you qualified that badly in, in 2018. So you're right. I think when you nail qualifying, you tend to have better results. Yeah, for sure. Um, and like... But the reason that Sonoma, like the last Sonoma race worked out so well is because you can kind of qualify mediocre and be in like the best spot possible other than first or second, which is like the inside of the second row. So if you get a good start, you're in a pretty good spot, you know, to at least get like third. Mm. Um, so like if you can't, if you can't qualify in the top two, you kind of want to qualify about like fourth for most tracks. Um, but yeah, you know, it's just, it's all up to me just uh, being better. Um, I think I, I have the speed. But uh, I do need to get a little bit more to get to, like, Mitchell. Um, but part of it is, you know, consistency. Well, hopefully a feature race win for you at Atlanta in a week's time. Uh, let us know who gets it done for you. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, obviously, everyone at Coanda helps a lot, you know. Just, again, being able to test with Mitchell, uh, just a beast of a driver. Um, Virtual Racing School, our, our main partner, and uh, Vitek. Tim Quip, and one Design, you know, I, I keep forgetting to thank them. Um, because I, I never uh, get interviews as a road Coanda driver, um, other, other than this series. <laughs> yeah, um, so i um, got to thank those sponsors, and uh, it's all you to make the broadcast happen. Let's have a good last round at Atlanta. It'd be great to win, um, but we're just going to try to make the feature and go from there. Appreciate it, Bobby Zelensky from VRS Coanda Simsport. He came home in the third position. Thanks, Bobby, and we'll hopefully see you uh Again, here for post-race interviews in the first position. But Randy, I've had to think about Atlanta short for the final round of the season. And I think, great. We head to Atlanta, one of the best rallycross tracks iRacing has to offer. Now, I'm not that smart, Randy. But I, when I look at the championship, we are... The 84 points is the maximum you can take for three rounds. So help me out here. After qualifying, there's only 78 points available. So Mitchell has to stay within 78 points of Sammy Maddie. And then after the heats, he's got to stay within 70 heading into the feature. And even if Sammy Maddie is in the feature, it's game over. So whatever happens, he has to hope that Sammy Maddie just doesn't show up. Yeah, pretty much. He has to hope and pray that Sammy doesn't qualify well. Um, he has to hope that he has a poor heat race result. And then he has to pray that he doesn't then transition out of the LCQ. And it's not happened to Sammy all year. Of the drivers that have been consistent, I'd say the two most consistent drivers on the year have easily been Mitchell DeYoung and Sammy Matty Trogan. There's no question of that, I think, in anyone's mind. And uh, it'd be a big ask to see Sammy Matty Trogan not make a feature. It almost happened a couple of weeks ago, but he just slipped in and was able to sort of... Uh, have uh, uh, some damage control ending up, uh, I think, P10 in that feature race. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, that's what that's the only way Mitchell can win this championship is if the set esports car of Sammy Matty Trogan does not make the 10-lap finale going into next week. And uh, it's very possible, even on top of that, that Sammy could wrap up the championship in qualifying or after the heats as well. And Atlanta short is a circuit that's ever so fun in iRacing. Now, the difference between long and short is that the final corner is sort of, we turn right earlier, don't we, Randy? And the jump is moved further down the road. Yeah, so at the long layout, you, of course, have that big, long uh, gravel sweeper, which is a ton of fun to watch. Um, that then shoots you out onto a big straightaway, and then you go all the way down, and you have a sort of a cool, fast sweeping hairpin, and then back up towards start finish. Here you kind of come off that gravel sweeper, and then immediately it's a turn to the right. Um, you don't have that big high speed section that sort of shortcuts the two lanes, so to speak, uh, and then it's another right, and then right up and over the jump once again. So it's a lot more compact this layout, and. I'm going to be honest, it was hard to pass at Atlanta, uh, the opening round of the championship, and I think it's going to be even harder to make passes at this short layout. You're going to have to get physical, I think, to make passes, and uh, uh, it's, I mean, it's been like that all year, but this is going to be a 
difficult, probably I think the most difficult circuit on the uh, on the schedule Ooh. to make passes at. I don't think any of the other track come even close. I like that hot take. And on that note, it's time to wrap up. With these uh, 600 horsepower rallycross cars, we'll be back racing again for the final time in 2019. I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to apologize once more for my voice, and I guarantee it'll be back next week in seven days' time. But let me just get through this wrap-up now because I'm struggling. But the next race will be... Oh, no, I can't even... Jeez, I sound like Jake Sperry calling action right now. Next race will be on the 30th of November. That's in a week's time until we head back to Atlanta for the second time this season, albeit a different layout. Like we said, we're using the short version compared to the long, and it will host the ninth and final round of the 2019 Thrustmaster iRacing Rallycross World Championship. Hooray, my voice is coming back. Coverage will begin at 5.45 p.m. GMT on Racebot TV, streaming live on the iRacing eSports Network. Now, get yourself involved in iRacing. Visit iRacing.com. Grab yourself a subscription. Visit Racebot.tv for more information on upcoming events. Definitely check the website out. But from myself, Jonathan Simon. From Randolph Chenneth alongside me, our special guest, Chris Leone. From Paul Smith and Drew Adamson behind the scenes. From iRacing and our production crew of Racebot TV. We hope you enjoyed this Racebot TV presentation broadcasted on all our associated platforms. Our winner today, Mitchell DeYoung, will say so long from Daytona.